Three series, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach, they ushered in a mythical era in the West. They are known here as the Big Three for like with other mediums wherein the prefix big insert number here is used, they had a tremendous influence in their sphere. They're the unrivaled trio that got a whole generation of fans into anime and manga. Ember Reviews has written the piece that extensively dives into how the Big Three arose through historical circumstance and how those circumstances will never be repeated. Consider this an addendum, a video reply to that piece, where I will go over what he says while adding my own thoughts on the matter in detail and more importantly, adding an explanation of how the shonen aesthetic played a role in their growth and by extension, the western fandoms. But before diving into that, please consider investing in me and my friends over on Patreon because we really want to give it our all to expand the shonen discourse. Quick refresher as always, shonen is defined aesthetically by five key aspects that span beyond demographic and genre. A predisposition towards optimism, passing of the torch, teaching empathy, power, and a pure heart, which is defined as a mind repeatedly cleansed of thoughts and attitudes that diverge from one's life goal. One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach were all published in the biggest magazine for manga in the world, Shonen Jump. These three series were the main staple of the magazine for over a decade, so obviously they left some of their DNA around. It's for this reason that I figured it was so important to examine how they embodied the Shonen aesthetic since it would set an example for later works. Naturally, we'll have to look at them individually in this regard, but there are interesting things we can learn from examining them as a unit first. All the authors of these series were descendants of previous Jump titles, naturally. Oda worked as an assistant to Masaya Tokohiro and Nobuhiro Watsuki as a teenager, and both Kishimoto and Kubo were inspired by Togashi's Yu Hakusho, one example being Sasuke's design being based off Hiei's. And of course, all of them are influenced by Toriyama and Dragon Ball. This is important to note, because the authors themselves were embodying the elements of passing the torch, though it's something that can only be intuited by the West at the time. Like their predecessors, they started out simple, and episodic, and comedic, gradually expanding the seriousness and the scale. One Piece's first 100 chapters are spent more or less goofing around across the seas. Naruto started on a single mission that was a microcosm of the series' best themes. Bleach didn't even have a plot to start with, being more like watching a Let's Plays of a guy in real life. This wasn't dwaddling but an intentional choice by all three series to get us invested in the characters and worlds first, as well as pay homage to the predecessors before forging their own paths. Predisposition towards optimism Another thing that Big Three had in common with regard to how they related to the aesthetic was in their attitude towards optimism. Whereas some of their influences had certain cynicism to them, to almost balance out the optimism, the Big Three leaned harder into optimism than even Dragon Ball. It's no secret that the 90s was the grimdark era around the world as postmodernism started to really set in. And so Jump became a refuge for that, a place where talk no jutsu was a valid option. Which to briefly sum up is when Naruto instead of using ninjutsu would simply talk to an opponent and tell them their hypocrisies and suddenly they would change their ways. It meant not being a hero on paper didn't mean you weren't an actual fact. See Luffy the Pirate and Ichigo. By virtue of being targeted at a younger audience, they were more upfront about their messages without the need to act too cool for school. Characters' dialogue and plot are all allowed to reach their full potential when you have a guiding element to the story, a way to understand what's happening in the big picture sense. And for the big three, more than any other part of the aesthetic, that guiding element was optimism. Power. Now let's quickly talk about power. One thing all the big three protagonists had in common is that they weren't portrayed as particularly book smart. Even Ichigo, while not stupid, wasn't shown as more than average in his studies. Rather, their power came from breaking the social rules. Luffy stabs himself under the eye to try and join Shanks' crew. Naruto pulls pranks and cheats, and these are both demonstrated in Chapter 1. Ichigo is literally an outsider to the Soul Society, and all three main characters fundamentally upset the social order for the better using their power and mindsets. An understated part of the Big Three's success is how relatable and sympathetic the main characters are. It goes beyond just seeing them as admirable or cool. We literally see ourselves in their shoes. Yu Yu Hakusho was filled with anti-heroes and anti-villains. The early Jojos are chivalrous knights, or too cool for school types. Goku is literally an alien from outer space. It's not necessarily that no one could relate to the earlier Jump protagonists. After all, every character in the world has some person who relates to them. But they weren't crafted with a purpose in mind like the big three seem to have been. Naruto alone on the swing has become the icon for the loneliness many of us anime and manga fans have felt in our lives. And certainly I know I related to the imagery very strongly. Moreover, the Big Three has allowed many of us to escape the path of isolation, in a similar way to the characters, through empathy and subsequent connection. And let me add, if you are in that lonely place, you don't have to be afraid to reach out to others. That is what these series taught us after all. A Pure Heart 
Once again, a quick clarification for those unfamiliar. What defines a pure heart is a person dedicated primarily by going after a singular goal throughout their life. Paradoxically, a pure-hearted person is someone who enjoys the detours of life more than the destination. This is because, generally speaking, they are able to reason more clearly based on their consistent emotions. In short, they have a singular purpose and thus are able to truly enjoy life. With this in mind, it's interesting to note that this is the area where the big three are the most traditional in the aesthetic terms. Pure-hearted villains and heroes have their clash of ideals, and out of that forms a new synthesis. It's a lesson I think we'll be needing the most in the times ahead. If you want to help us expand the Shonen aesthetic, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Even a dollar would be extremely helpful. Plus, that dollar minimum is all that's needed to get any exclusive content release or any of the bonus rewards we give out. I'll see you soon with another Shonen video next Wednesday. In the meantime, while you wait, please go check out the videos we shouted out in this one or our other content on our channel. Thank you.